So I'm going to try and explain this as best and as clearly as I can because usually I'm not capable of doing that. Now, the biggest challenge of this whole build has been this. How to make this window. And I've had a couple ideas in mind when I started out, but I was actually looking through a forum and I found some advice on how to do it. And I came up with an idea on my own here. Now some of you might be thinking, why don't you just use this piece? Well, this is to the uh, completed kit right here that uh, Greg sent me. And so if I end up using this, uh, I'll still have to make one for that one. So I, the, the, the challenge still remains. Have to build this. This is very hard to do, right? So like I said, I was browsing around the internet and I did find uh, an idea and I kind of went with it, took it in a different direction. I saw someone else doing something quite differently than what I'm going to plan. Now this should work, I hope, but if not, I'll have to come up with something else again. So the first thing that I did is I took that round styrene and I made this circle here. So you can see this nice lip here. And it goes to the edge here. So this is actually right there. That's actually that. So I have this much play, which is a couple millimeters there. And so I'm actually going to take those off in a second. So this is my barrier here. So next thing was how to make this octagon shape in the center. And so what I thought I would do is I thought I would measure the distance of um, of the bars here and I would cut them at an angle and just glue them all together and I'd eventually have the shape. Well that was attempt number one and it didn't exactly work that well as you can see here. So yeah, toss that aside. Attempt number two was a bit different. So what I did is I took my compass tool and I placed this little drawing of an octagon that I made over a piece of styrene and I would punch all these little holes here where it was supposed to go and I cut out a little octagon out of the styrene and then basically what I did is I oh wrong way no oh, had it the right way before I'd put it like this the thickness that it needed to be and I would place it on the little octagon I cut out and I would just trace it like this and scribe this little line cut it out, cut it out, cut it out and I eventually did this to the complete circle thankfully I have pictures to show what the devil is I'm talking about but in the end, if I can actually pick it up I made this there we go my little octagon, it's not perfect but um, I think it'll work and I think it'll look quite nice when it's inside of the model. I need to write down on the where the top is. That's not the pen I want. This is the one I want. So what I'm going to do now is I need to make some strips. Same thickness. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to go with this and make these you know, nice little brackets like that. And this is going to be my tricky part. I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to basically wing it and hope for the best. But they'll fit in here. This will keep them from basically falling out all the time. And then just glue that nicely on top. So that's my big challenge. That's my, my plan and my theory for getting it to work. Um, fingers crossed at this point. If it doesn't work again, I'll have to come up with something else. But I'm I'm quite motivated that this will be successful. So cross your fingers, here we go. One thing I forgot to mention, which has been a bit of an issue with me and this kit, is which way do the lines go for the um, the frame? Now I've got a couple of TIE fighters here. This is an interceptor. And so this is what I thought it would look like. This is an orange Imperial Guard, sorry, orange red Imperial Guard version. And uh, you can see, I, I actually really like this because it makes sense. You can see through the top, you're not, you know, looking at a bar 
through it there. So this is what I thought it was going to look like. And then you take a look here at this um, Hot Wheel one here, regular TIE Fighter, and this is more accurate. Uh, the bar is at the top, and the last one I have is another titanium. This one's quite inaccurate. The the circle, or sorry, octagon is way too small. It should be quite a bit bigger, like this. So, I tried to get it kind of uniform. And don't ask me how I did this, because I'll never really be able to explain it. But uh, here, check it out. So I just. Uh, I just trimmed off all these little sections here. I just took my hobby cutters and I just went like this along each of them there. Made them nice and flat. I added more glue. I'm going to sand them down again later. I'm going to try adding in a little bit of filler. I have to be very careful because this styrene is not very strong. And if I add too much pressure, yeah, you can see it bouncing around there it'll go right through but if I'm careful with it I take my time at it I should be able to get that to look quite nice and then the next step is I'm gonna I'm gonna add in some more pieces I'm gonna try at least I'm gonna try and add some little details that go along the bars there and then it's gonna be to paint it all gray these were a darker color um, as you can see, especially like on this one, they're a darker gray. And so I'm going to do that. Uh, as well as some of the details like these on here, they were darker gray as well. And once that's done, I think, I really, really think, I'll have to add on the, the uh, lasers on the bottom. They're going to be last. They're going to be the very last thing. Mostly because I'm very worried about breaking them off. But the, the next thing I'm going to do is add on the wings. Because I, I did the display stand. It's, it's painted and drying right now. might actually be dry enough to handle. And it actually works. It sits there properly balanced. And um, I'll, be able to be, I'll be able to give it a flat coat. And basically be done. I'm, I'm very close to being finished. Which I'm, I can't express how happy I am about that. It's been a very fun project, very, very interesting, very, very different, but it's, it's, it's gone on for a very long time, and uh, there's a lot of other projects I would love to do. I'm really glad that the due date for the group build was moved to February, because I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't be able to have this thing done. It's, it's the first week of January, I think. No, second week of January, sorry. And this is as much of as far as I've got on it. So, that all being said, I'm going to go and continue on here. But, yeah, that's the deal with the frame. It's on there. It works. I'm happy. Came with a bit of an easier solution to uh, my masking. Or, sorry, uh, sanding off the areas here for the front. Um, been using... Mr. Surfacer 1200, and I'm just like I'm just gonna start layering it a bit more on there. It is very self-leveling, and uh, I think it, I think that'll be a bit quite a bit easier. I also painted on the top here. This is just a little bit different on the top, and I like that it adds a bit of color into a very gray model. This is the same color that this is going to be painted. Um, it is P3. Uh, gray coat gray. Uh, a lot of times I hear people complaining uh, about how Tamiya paints are actually kind of difficult to hand brush. Um, I've kind of worked around that. I find that if you use a lot of them, like a lot of paint, it does level itself up pretty flat. But they are a bit harder to, to hand brush. Um, and yeah, a lot of people say use um, some paint retarder with the Tamiya paints, but uh, if you're looking for good paints to hand brush, these are excellent, excellent paints. I love them. I have the display stand. It's, again, it's just a round base with the stand drilled in it, but check this out. It 
there we go. TIE Fighter is flying now. So, like I said, I'm going to keep adding a bit more of this Mr. Surfacer on here. Going to make that quite nice and thick, and then it'll be easier to sand that down a little bit. But again, it's just the plastic so fragile, it's, it's kind of, what do you do without breaking something? So I'm going to add more of that in there. And, yeah, getting close, 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 close to being done here. Well, this P3 color isn't bad. It's actually a very nice looking color. I, I quite, I quite like it. Except it blends into the background a lot. So, in case you're following along, XF22 RLM Gray. This ought to do just nicely. So, I'm going to go and repaint everything except the inside because that was that was very difficult to paint the inside of the frame in there but so all this it's gonna be that nice it's kind of a gray green I think it's gonna be a nice contrast it's dark and different and it's gonna allow you to see inside of there because this yeah this just blends right in it's very sad but at least I have the paint with me and uh, I can make this these uh, changes very quick. I just put this back on the stand and press the red button. Oh yeah, that's the color. Look at that. So now I got to paint the outside rim here. I got to paint well the inside of the rim as well. Um, and yeah, these all these dark gray dots that I had on there, much 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 better. It's going to look even better when it dries because it's going to be a bit darker, but that is fantastic. So yeah, just some touch-ups. You know, i got to paint the edges here like that. That's going to take me a little while to do, but it looks absolutely fantastic. I love it. And you can see it from a distance. So you can just, you can yeah, you can just, your eye goes to the darker detail, but it's still aware of the frame. It's exactly, exactly what I had in mind. I've got to say the gray is much better. It looks a lot nicer, especially on the top. The next step is, and I've gone through basically what's like a pre-flight checklist of figuring out what is done and what isn't done on this model. And I've done most of it. I've done it. I've washed it. I've cleaned the washes. I've weathered it, I added on the cage in the front I'm almost done and it scares me a little bit because I keep thinking I'm forgetting something because it's been such a big project but it's time to put the wings on and I'm very nervous so for that I bought Gorilla Super Glue this is supposed to be incredibly strong super glue I'm gonna glue these on cross your fingers I'm not gonna record this but I will show it afterwards. I'm very, very nervous about this, so here we go. Words cannot begin to express how happy I am right now that I was able to check it out, get the wings on. Look at that. Ta da! Both of them are on, and they're on there quite properly. It's They're, they're level, they're correct, they're you know, one side's not wonky than the other, and I'm so happy. Um, th it was actually more challenging. This took me two days to glue these on, because I had to wait for this stuff to dry. Now, this Gorilla Glue, it's supposed to be really, really tough, incredibly strong, and it's supposed to take 10 seconds, 10 to 30 seconds to dry when you press it together. Now... I'm not even joking. I didn't use a lot of super glue. Yeah, it was just a very minimal amount because this is so tough. I thought, I don't need it, right? And so I pressed it. And I'm not kidding. I pressed the one side of the wing for over 10 minutes and it never bonded. It was so frustrating. Um, but it dries very, seems to be very rock hard, but it takes forever for it to start kicking in. I don't know, maybe it really needs like incredibly thin layers, you know, maybe maybe that's the key to this stuff. 
I, I think that might be my problem. It's good, but it takes forever to dry. Ten minutes. I'm not even kidding. Uh, and then you can see these little white bracers in there, especially on this one. I had to add some into the back, um, but mostly these ones on the tops. Um, hold on, let me, I don't want to drop it because I'm still nervous. Uh, these ones here on the top, they are added support. So I'm going to paint these gray and weather them up a little bit, especially like this one in the back. This wasn't the correct angle. I managed to get it to all work and. Uh, yeah, it was it was frustrating, but it's on there. I also glued on the two front cannons, or blasters, whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure exactly what their designation is. I thought they were cannons. And I painted those up gray. And now I'm going to paint the tips. Um, P3 Cador Red Highlight, even though it is it says red, but that's orange. It's orange. I guess it could be a red, but first call I'd say orange um, but seeing this on the stand is is incredibly cool I love it I'm just so happy to have it, it, it I'm almost done that's that's my big deal so what I'm going to do next I forgot to do this and I have to find the styrene for this stuff is I wanted to add some braces into here some more detail and I totally totally slipped my mind because my, my, my whole mind was on, oh, i got to put on the wings. Um, and then, yeah, i got to paint those tips orange. Now, the wings, you remember I talked about they're from a toy, and they are a bit smaller than the, um, than the real you know, 36 scale. And it's not that bad when you actually look at it from the front. It's, it's, it's not terribly bad, but when you look at it from the kind of the side and the back, yeah, there you go. That, now you can see kind of how much smaller they are but I have to admit it, it doesn't bother me as much as I thought it was going to I'm still really really happy with it and um, I just I seriously can't wait to have this thing done so I'm gonna go and and finish adding on those parts and painting it and then the next step is a flat coat believe it or not I'm at that point now where I can I can flatten the model and hopefully Hopefully nothing will happen, knock on wood, and I'll be done. Alright everybody, this is my final video for the MPC TIE Fighter, sorry, TIE Advance, take two. Um, yeah, this was, this was a very fun project. Um, I know a lot of you were quite uh, skeptical <laughs> about it to begin with. Um, some of your comments, you were wondering if I was going to be able to get it done. Well. Here it is. And I'll be honest, there was times where I was wondering if I was going to get it done or not, but yeah. Like I said, here it is. She's finished. She's done. I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. Um, I think the only thing I can ever say of a complaint, um, which I shouldn't, but I, I will anyways, is a little hair there. 
Um, you can see the wings on the back. They're a bit short. Um, and here's the real ones. For, or not real ones, but the ones that are for this kit. This is for the unbuilt one. So you can see they're quite a bit longer there. It's coming out on the side. But they're about the same height. Uh, I think the angle is a bit more correct uh, on the curve of these ones here. But I, like I said before, I, I really don't care that they're short. I'm, I'm really happy with this model. Um, I've, I've quite enjoyed the past few days before I flat coated it. Just seeing it sitting there in its display stand and, and being able to look at it, I'm I'm so excited about this. Um, mounting the wings on were actually surprisingly the hardest part of the model. This at making this, uh, I added on that styrene and painted it over there, so you can see it's some little texture. But adding on this frame, that was actually easier than the wings, if you can believe that. Um, but they, it's all on there. They're secured. It looks great. And I'm just, again, it's not in the proper colors, it's not that blue-gray. But I really like this gray color in here. I think it's quite fun. I, I, I like the texture of it. And um, I'm just, again, I'm just really happy with how this whole thing turned out. I really love that I was able to make this open up and you can see, you know, the detail on the inside. You can't quite see it. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get some good. I will have gotten some good pictures. I'm going to take them in a little while here. And um, you yeah, know, detailing the cockpit was the most fun. I enjoyed that way too much. I got so carried away with just adding in all this little detail and crap and whatever else I could come up with. That was the most fun part of the build. And uh, just adding on all these little pieces. It was just I, I can't quite explain that properly but it was such a um, it felt like such a stress release you know because a lot of times you follow the instructions you're going this 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 and then you got to do this 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 but for for the this uh, tie advance it was like who cares I'm gonna build the chair it might not be accurate but I can't find a picture so I'm just gonna go make something I can't find a good picture of the cockpit so I'll just you know I'll make something um, and like especially like in the back here it was it was, well, I, can't, I don't have all the parts, so I'll make something very close to that and just have fun. And that was very, very freeing with this with this project, and I, I liked that a lot. I really love my little laser cannons in the front. I think they look great. I really, really like those. And um, it was just fun. It was just so much fun. It was... I will admit, it was tiring. There were days where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And there were days where I wanted to put it in a box and just never, you know, look at it again. I've been working on this for quite a while, on and off. It's October, and it, now it's January. I don't usually work on projects this long or even leave them alone this long. I thought I was going to be able to get this done in a month. Um, that just shows how naive I am about it all. But now that's done... I'm just, again, I'm just so happy to have this thing finally finished, and um, here it is. Here it is. So this is my entry into the SMKR Old School Star Wars group build. It's done. It's done. <laughs> That's about all I can say. I'm just so happy to have it finally completed. It got to a weird point where I just I didn't know what to do next, and then I kind of went, "Oh wait, I'm almost done," and now it is done. So I would like to first off, before I finish this video here, uh, a big thank you to SMKR Scale Model Kit Review for hosting this group build, and uh, because of you hosting this group build, second person I got to thank here is Greg at SteveTheFish.net. He's the one that actually encouraged me to participate in this group build. Um, this was this was his fault basically that I'm building in it. Um, so huge thank you to those two people. So I'm going to include a link to their channels down below. Be sure that you check out Greg's channel and his AT-AT build that he's doing. He's doing the old AMT AT-AT and it is actually very very fantastic. Um, and uh, it's very fun. I'm I'm really enjoying his his build of that.
And check out SMKR's channel. He has a lot of old Star Wars kit reviews on there and a lot of the new Bandai kits. He gets the Bandai kits really pretty quick. So I don't know what his secret is for that, but uh, if you want any of the new Bandai Star Wars kits, that's definitely the place to go. So a big thank you to those two. Um, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done this without Greg encouraging me to do it. I'm glad I'm glad you did because this would have been one of those projects that sat in the back, and uh, I would have been oh I'll get to it one day. It was this was definitely going to be one of those, but yeah, he definitely got me going on it and I'm glad he did so thank you for that because I'm very happy with it in the end. and I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you guys for your encouraging comments over these past few months and a lot of your suggestions and advice um, a lot of them been really helpful and uh, a lot of them were very good ideas unfortunately I wasn't able to take them all in because like I said um, people, people often tell me how to build or what I should do to build my models and um, I, in most cases, the model's actually done. Uh, some people seem to think I build my models within three days, but no, they're basically done. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm moving on to another project. This is one I was a little slower with, so I was actually able to take quite a bit of advice from a lot of you. So thank you for that. Thank you again for cruising along with me on this on each of these videos. It's been quite a while. Now it's done. Now I can go move on. I think I need to reward myself. Something a lot simpler and something more well engineered. I think I need to move on to a Bandai kit. So, yeah, I need to do some Bandai Star Wars. I've got a couple and I haven't I haven't tackled any of them yet. So thanks everybody for watching. Um, the, I'm going to include all the pictures to the still gallery that you saw there on my blog. Uh, that's robesofcloud9.blogspot.ca There'll be a link to it down below. There's also a lot of other model kits and inbox reviews on there. And you can even subscribe to this channel if you like. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming up here in the near future. There's going to be models, reviews, who knows what else. You can like and even leave a comment. I'll do my best to reply to that as soon as possible. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this build series. This is Rebels of Cloud 9. If I haven't taught you anything, at least you've learned what not to do. I'll see you guys next time.